you found the most in-depth coverage of the silver and black. The nation and the league arrive in Las Vegas in 2020. Live from the CBS Sports Radio 1140 studios, it's Silver and Black Today. Join the conversation by calling 702-889-5978. And now, here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Raider Nation. Welcome to Las Vegas' only all Raiders talk show. That is Silver and Black today, coming to you live now from the Valley High Golf Course. Valley High Golf Club on the Las Vegas Strip. That's right. Just south of Mandalay Bay, we are here for the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament. We're going to have some folks come on later. Uh, we were outside talking to a slew of NFL players, getting their opinions, of course, on the news of the weekend, which was, which was of course, Serena Williams losing, right? That's yeah. what was going on? It was a great tennis match. It, it really was. was she made it interesting the being there. But I will tell you, uh, no, of course, it's Antonio Brown. <laughs> We've talked about that. We're going to talk about uh, that whole situation because I know Raider fans want to hear about it. We want to talk about it. Uh, it was hard not being on the air yesterday and Friday and Thursday because of all that that was going on. Thank God but, for Twitter. That's right. Retweet that. I, 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 you know what? I would be fine, guys, not having my phone in my hands uh, for, for quite a while because it was You burned them off ridiculous. yesterday? Your hands are melting. Um, yep. And let me, before, you know, people come on the air and they're like, who the hell is talking with you, Scott? Well, again, with yeah. me today... Lindsey Brown. Lindsay hey, Brown. Good morning. Thank um, you for having me again. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, we're glad that you got out of jail. Bail was not that expensive. No, nope, not this you. weekend. It's um, easy in Vegas. Yes. That's right. We also have Chaz Osborne with us here as well. Welcome, Chaz, back, of course. Yeah. So, so um, what I wanted to do, too. Oh, yeah. Kelly had a business uh, uh, issue. He had to... Uh, attend to this morning, so that's why he's not here. Kelly hasn't been on for a few weeks. I don't want people to think <laughs> Kelly's not coming back because Kelly's coming back. He keeps just, dodging us, man. I'm not just, sure. He just had some things going on. A reminder, we are streaming on all of the three major platforms video. Uh, it's it's a smaller setup here, so we, we have a different look, uh, not as polished as we are usually in the studio, but take a look at it. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can find us on there as we are broadcasting and simulcasting live, I should say. All right, let's jump into this. Antonio Brown, the situation, of course, uh, goes from Thursday through his release Sunday. You knew every two hours there was something going on, guys. And to me, the Raiders did what they could. They stood by their guy for a really long time, gave him the room he needed, so to speak, to to, uh, be himself. And I've said this many times on this show, that, that that was fine, that you manage different people differently, and yep. that was okay. Yep. But it reached the point of complete idiocy, lunacy, whatever <laughs> other C word you want to use, yep. A-A-C-Y. Uh, but, but the bottom line is Antonio Brown is now a member, as we all knew he would be, of the New England <laughs> Patriots. Guys, Lindsey and Chaz, tell me, uh, first of all, when this all happened, Lindsey, we were in a big um, – um, text group about this, yes. the, the, the four of us, um, and and you thought maybe there was some method to this madness, because it is madness. I still think there's some method to the madness. I just don't know if it's the exact method that I was uh, conspiring about, but <laughs> nonetheless, he is on the evil empire that is the New England Patriots, and that's about <laughs> as conspiracy theory laden as you can get in the NFL. Well, but Lindsay, what, what did you, like, when you saw that video, I thought it was very interesting. The first promise. one. The first mm-hmm. one on Friday. Yep. The, so, A.B., th- I believe this is the one where he has the Gruden tape of his conversation, which right. everybody on Twitter pretty much jumped on right away saying, is this legal? Uh, yeah. And you're like, probably not. But <laughs> the big thing that I took away from that first YouTube video, because at the time, we, we did not know what we know now, but my question was surrounded or surrounding what kind of angle is he trying to take looking at his brand? Because... We've, had, we've seen types of behaviors like this in the NBA. We haven't seen a lot of it in the NFL. And he was on Uninterrupted with LeBron a few weeks ago. And this is a, that video was very much like bigger than football, bigger than basketball, that same type of messaging. So I was thinking he was angling towards retirement but going out like on, on a, in a blaze of glory right. in, some, in some way. But clearly he was looking to leave someplace, ah. just wasn't football quite yet. But it just seems like... the. 
<laughs> it's hard to talk about because, you know, when you watch him in those clips, those limited clips we had him from Hard Knocks and, and from training camp, he's so impressive. And I can mm-hmm. just, I'm coming from the same um, standpoint as John Gruden. Like, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get him out there. John Gruden's talking about, I've got plays for him. I can't wait for him to get out there. And then he starts doing all these things and you, it's kind of confusing. And Absolutely. Coming, and then was it planned the whole time? I just, I feel like the rest of Raider Nation, like, did we get duped or... What was this guy thinking the whole time? There's no way that he could have orchestrated this. I feel like he was genuine when he came over, and then one thing led to another, and that happened. Well, and, and Chaz, we we're, again, we're at the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament here at Bally High Golf Club on the Las Vegas Strip. That's why you see, if you're watching yep. on video, you see this this different and kind of dark. Benefiting the Javante dark Woods and, Foundation. Yes. We're matching That's our right. souls this um, morning. Happy, ha- happy to help with... Uh, uh, childhood asthma and making sure kids um, get screened and and so on. Yep. But with the Antonio Brown thing, so here's what here's what I've said all along, and I've been consistent. Okay, I defended him. You guys know that on this show, I defended him over and over. His helmet grievance. He went by the rules of the book. The book. I mean, he did. He yep. went by the book. Yep. He did it. It might have been a pain in the ass, and we might have all thought it was annoying. But the reality is, he followed the rules. Second, his feet. Okay. He's a dumbass. It happens. Right? Yeah. A lot of players, it might not have been his fault either. No. Well, but a lot of players get, have injuries off the field that aren't related to their, their football. It happens in all. They play paintball if you watch ballers. No, just kidding. Uh, but, wow. but all these different things that, that occur, the issue, though, became, and, and Chaz, this is where I'm going to talk about. We talked. There's a lot of, of former NFL players here today. I'm not using any names to respect privacy, but we talked to them. And a majority of those we talked to, Chaz, mm-hmm. felt as though this was his plan at some point. His plan yeah. at some point. Not at the beginning. Not with the trade. Not when he came over. Right. Maybe not even when camp started and he hurt his feet. But at some point, there was agreement amongst these guys who played in the NFL that at some point Antonio Brown or, or someone associated with him came up with the thing, well, okay, let, we're yeah. not happy here. Let's get out of uh, here. We, How do we do this? We've all been in a relationship, and then all of a sudden you see some greener grass. Oh, yeah. Hmm, let me see yep. how I can get out of this relationship because I want to be in that relationship. Exactly, and the way to do it, because I don't want to be a really bad person to break up with that person. I want to make that person break up with me instead, and yes. that's where it gets kind of crazy, and I think that's where people are really confused is that – I think this could have been avoided if he just literally said, hey, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Because teams don't want that on their team to begin with, let alone bring in that toxicity, bring in that right. that drama that he did. And granted, it makes our job super fun. I had a great time yeah. yesterday watching the Street of Williams match <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I love seeing the Raiders at, at the top of the headlines every right, day. It's right. Great. It's, it's great for us. <laughs> Even if it's negative, I it, love it. Absolutely. It's great for us here. But that's the problem is that it could have just been handled differently and it just seemed like it was too coincidental that this wasn't planned because it seemed like every time the story would kind of die down a little bit be like oh the helmet thing's figured out like, right. okay or the like we, he apologized and all of a sudden right. there'd be like not just gasoline throw but like <laughs> he's taking all of the chevrons and just ta- and just letting it fly with the hoses it's insane and so i think that's where people are really irked by it yeah he's a master of it too uh, he, he did a great job yeah. in the last few days. he's a smart guy too i think we people forget that mm-hmm. and like most most of these football guys are these days they're businessmen and that's where that's where my kind of little conspiracy theory came out well I, I would disagree i don't think he is smart i think mm-hmm. he's savvy there's a difference to me at least i don't think that that he's smart enough to realize how long term it can affect him look we live in a world where if you are the top athlete you will get away with almost anything. Yep. We saw a lot of comparisons over the weekend to Tyreek Hill. Okay, Domestic abuse happened when he was younger. This time, allegedly happened. They didn't bring charges, all this stuff. We've had the Ray Rice thing. We've had all these issues in the NFL with things like domestic abuse. And then you have situations where players act... You can call it unpro- – I think it's unprofessional. The way it went down, you talk to these guys outside. Now, these are older players that used to play in a different NFL. Yeah. Yep. That's different. You know, generations are different. Um, but they all, to a man, had the same point of view. In fact, uh, a couple players told us, look, if that, was, if that guy was on our team back in our day, what we do is we have a team-only meeting, mm-hmm. and there might, there might be some punches thrown. Oh, I'm um, not surprised. And, and that stays in the room, and nothing yeah, happens. They kept everything in-house. Yeah. They took right. care of business in-house. So this is a different time back then, you know, with all the media and the Twitter and, and the look at me kind of. Yep. Things are changing, good and bad, good and bad things. So, no, And I agree with that. I think, though, when you look at the situation with Antonio Brown, to me, the, 
not only does it hurt the team on the field, clearly, you, you lose one of the best players in the league, yep. mm-hmm. but off the field, the fans. Raider fans, ha- and Chaz, you, you're in that group. You're a Raider fan. Yep. 17 years of just misery, with the exception of one year. Right. And now you got to deal with a guy you got really excited. This is a guy who was going to make a difference. Hey, if I'm Derek Carr, I'm upset. He didn't talk to the media yesterday. Right. His right? brother was tweeting about the whole thing, oh, too. Yeah. His bro- I'm sorry, his he was brother kind of using his brother. More on that later. Yeah, More on we'll that. definitely get into that a lot yes. more. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, yeah, we we got, but but to me, from fan, from the fans' perspective, the fans out there, our listeners, Raider Nation, uh, this is a, another gut blow. A year after right. the Khalil Mack and trade, which as a Raider fan or, or any still. sports fan, you're going to roll the dice on a superstar, absolutely, ten out of ten times, yeah. right? And so I don't think you know Raider Nation and, and myself included, I'm upset about it, but. I would have done it 10 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got a chance to get an all-time, you know, superstar in his prime, you know, you have to take that chance. And, uh, you know, the way it played out was unfortunate, but I'd do it all over again, no problem. I would, too, because the draft picks, you just never know. Also, the one thing I say, and we're going to talk about this uh, in into the next segment, too, um, is I don't blame the Patriots for what they did. No. Like, I, I, I honestly, I don't like the Patriots, but I respect. It's like Who the does? Yankees. No one like, does. Nobody it's does. like the Yankees. I hate the Yankees. New England. But I yeah. respect yeah. what they do, and, and you can call them cheaters, whatever. The, the bottom line is they perform and they win, okay? Yep. And so they took a flyer. I can tell you, though, to a person, Bill Belichick will not put up with what John Gruden and Mike Mayock oh, put up with. Oh, certainly not. It'll be over quickly well, you know, if he does and that. And that might be the question that we're not asking. Did did management do enough? Does Mark Davis need to step in? You know, there's a lot of variables. Maybe maybe um, Mayock and the management could have helped him with the helmet problem and, and gone out and done a few more things. Now, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. And we heard in John Gruden's press conference yesterday, he kept saying over and over, thank you to the players, thank you to the front office. We did a tremendous job. We exhausted, you know, all of our our resources trying to help this guy. So apparently they did, but we don't know. They could they have done more to help him with the helmet? Could they have done more just in general? You know. Well, and that's where we'll come back yeah. after the break, Chaz, because I do want to talk about how the organization handled it. Uh, to me, because because there, there's a lot to talk about there. Do you, how do you handle a person who acts like Antonio Brown? How do you deal with somebody who might not yeah. fit into the regular mold of? 99% of the rest of humanity, that's what they had to deal with. So when we come back from this break, we'll bring that up. And, of course, we'll take your calls, too. 702-889-5978 is the number. You're listening to Silver and Black today, live from Bally High Golf Club at the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Foundation. We'll be back right after this. The Dodgers take on the Giants today at noon on CBS Sports Radio 1140. This is Jim Plunkett, and you're listening to the Silver and Black today. All right, the quarterback brings us back in, Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett. Of course, who yes. went from the Patriots to the Raiders. Oh, I see you right? connecting the dots. Remix on a so Sunday. We don't do anything by accident. That's how it works. See? I see you connecting the dots. Welcome there. back to the Silver and Black today here, live on location from the Icky Valley Woods. High. The Icky Woods uh, Celebrity Golf <laughs> Tournament that benefit the Javante Woods Foundation. Of course, Icky's son, uh, Javante, unfortunately passed away about mm. nine years ago at the age of 16 due to asthma. Asthma takes the lives of 11 children a day. Yep. 11 kids a day in this country. Uh, make sure you you and your family and your kids get screened. Yep. I'm joined today, of course, by Chaz Osborne and Lindsey Brown. And before we went to the break, we were talking about how the radio organization handled this Antonio Brown situation. Could they have done things differently? Chaz, you raised the question, maybe. Um, and so I want to get your guys' view, and I'll start with you, Lindsay, on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what could, the, could the Raiders have done anything different, and would it have had any difference on the outcome that we saw yesterday? I really don't know what they could have done differently. We kind of discussed this on Thursday night for um, when we were broadcasting before the uh, Packers-Bears game for the rotation. 
I thought when they were dealing with this helmet thing that everybody was pretty much staying in whatever lane that you would expect from them. John Gruden was being very much like separate, but addressing it when he had to. Mayak was in the loop, but wasn't in our faces all the time. And AB, like we said earlier, and we've, you guys have said for a long time, this is totally normal. He filed this grievance in the springtime. Mm-hmm. But that's where it started to devolve because once he was fined, he wasn't happy with it. And that's where I kind of, that dis- that disconnect started for me because I'm like, dude, you missed practice. Right. Whether or not it's for a noble cause, that's not the question, but you did <laughs> miss practice. Right. And, that, and especially for a guy that was talking about, hey, I'm here for accountability. We're going to teach the young guys how to right. do things around here, blah, 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 blah. And when, first, when Mayak first came out and kind of made the statement, you know, are you all in? Are you all out? Absolutely. We all kind of thought, well, you know, that needed to be done. They yep. need to play a little good cop, bad cop with him and, and just find out where they stand with mm-hmm. him. And, of course, he came in the next day. I'm in. You know, I love yep. my guys. I want to be here. And then th- th- that was my question. Did, did Mayak, could he have helped more with the helmet? Could they have done more? Now, you know, as the media and, and fans, we only get to see what they show us on TV. Right. So we don't know what happened. And there, Hard Knocks but. isn't even what we, what's really going on, is that, right. obviously, with that example. Well, they have final cut say on yeah. hard, hard Knocks. So Absolutely. They, they're only showing you really what, you know, Gruden and Mayak want to want to show you as well. So I feel like they did, uh, they checked all the boxes and they did all the right things. And Antonio Brown just had a, had his own plan in his mind and right. was going in a different direction already. Yeah, but, but here's my point. I don't think they could have done anything differently because what could you have done with the helmet situation? That was through the league. They backed him up on him. Yep. They let him, they in essence, let him stay out of practice mm-hmm. to do the helmet thing. And they came out publicly and they said, we support you. Multiple times. Multiple times. Yep. And so this grievance, and I, and I wrote it on, on the station's website in a column, this grievance that he has with the Raiders, what the hell is it? Because he never articulated it. Right. So, yeah. so here's the thing. You can, like to your point earlier, Lindsay, you can be really smart, but if you can't articulate yourself, no one's going to be with you. This is now, smart, yeah. You can say, for example, and I know I'm not, these are not two similar situations. Let me say that up front. Colin Kaepernick, you knew what his issue was for the most part, mm-hmm. right? He, he, he articulated it enough at least to say, well, I'm either for you or I'm against you. A lot of people were against him. A lot of people supported him. I get that. With Antonio Brown, I could never understand and still don't understand to this day, other than he doesn't want to take personal responsibility. That's just my take. Uh, what his issue is. People don't understand him. Hey, pal, welcome to the world. Most of us go through life with a little bit of, hey, I'm not sure the world understands me. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Um, Not all of us have $30 million, but the reality is, look, that's life. You go through ups and downs. You learn. You try to find yourself. You try to get other people to value for who you are on the and off the field. The seasons of life. The seasons of life. He yeah. essentially punted away $30 million, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. He, he's, he's And Marquette King sitting there. Damn, why didn't right. I think of that? But he essentially hedged, hedged the bet on himself, which isn't a new concept in the NFL either. We see that we see players play all the time on those year-to-year contracts contracts on the, under the franchise right. tag. And I don't necessarily think anything he does is financially motivated. No, I don't think so. He's a late round pick. Right. And, and, and he, he, he grinded his way all the way up to the pinnacle of the wide receiver just core in the entire league over the course of his career. Right. Business is booming. He right. doesn't need the exactly. money. And that's where, <laughs> that's where it, the disconnect, because everybody else is like, well, why would you give up the money? Life's more than money, and right. he's made some money already. He hasn't made the ultimate amount, but I think what he's angling for is the money past football, the big-time branding money, aligning right. himself with certain messages and people. And the one thing that will help with that will be getting a few more championship rings to add to his legacy. Which the Raiders, I don't care what anybody says, we're not contending for. I don't think he has a problem with no. the Raiders, per se. I think no. he has a problem with where the Raiders are in their progression as a franchise. 100%. You That's what he has a problem right with. That's exactly well, what it was. And, and, and so, so then maybe that should have been a thought before you... Agree to it, sure. Right, um, but at the same time, I, you know, I think, and I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be honest, and and it, 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 sure, it's my age, it's my experience. Um, he acts like a petulant child. He doesn't get what he wants, and so then he wants something else. Um, I have five kids. I've been through that. I know what it's like, and so it, I see similarities there. Now, when you have leverage, and Drew Rosenhaus's agent, very good agent, very smart guy, very media savvy, very familiar with the Patriots. Absolutely, he. I think, said to him, look, man, if you want to walk away, walk away, because guess what? I got teams who will sign you. So there, there, was, no, there was never any risk for Antonio Brown to walk away or to act like he did with the Raiders, because guess what? The NFL, and, and this is not a slam on the league because I cover it, I love it, it's not the NFL, it's the MFL, it's the Money Football League. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to win, 
and Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft always want to win, and they do, guess what you're going to do? You're going to take a flyer on Antonio Brown because he makes your team better. And you know what? I think I can handle him. Yep. I mean, it worked with Randy Moss, right? He was kind of a... Kind of it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. They, they brought Albert Hainsworth in there. That didn't work. Sure. But they, they bring people in who are kind of on their last legs in the NFL and sometimes they're able to rein them in. But the big thing that the Patriots do is that they put the onus on the player. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, Very good point. this is Very what's good point. going on here. You have to conform yourself because we have a decade, and a, almost a decade and a half, of straight-up success. So I don't care who you right. are, what you've done. I think you know. the, the Raiders were sending that exact same message. Unfortunately, they don't have a decade right. and a half of success to back exactly. it up. Exactly. No, that's true. But at the same time, at what point? At what point, as 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 a as a culture, because you can't just say sports. You have to say as a culture. At what point as a culture do we say, look, we're not going to reward behavior like that? just because you have so much talent. But the bottom line is, as long as there's money associated with winning and there's money associated with your brand, Mm -hmm. and if someone can make your brand better, you're willing to put up with it. Hey, look, all they they could be thinking, if we can get through this season, we lost Rob Gronkowski, we have Josh Gordon back. By the way, Josh Gordon and Antonio Brown in the same locker room is going to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Plus Edelman. Plus Edelman. We, we have another shot here. Our quarterback's mm-hmm. aging. Tom Brady's still in great shape. He's still winning. But, but do we? why not? There's no risk. They were Look, already the favorites they, before they got Antonio they gave Brown, so. They gave him $9 million. That's what they're on the hook for. Yeah. Yep. So if they get $9 million out of him, hell, if they get, if they get nine games out of him, the more yeah. they make their money unless something incredibly crazy happens, which is distinctly possible. <laughs> <for Antonio laughs> something Brown. already crazy did happen, so why, why wouldn't we expect anything the, else? But that's the other thing with this story. And, Lindsay, you talked about earlier being on the radio, being in the media – we kind of love this stuff because mm-hmm. it just gets your juices. I mean, yesterday we were just constantly moving on stuff. <laughs> yeah. But the, the issue here is, though, did you ever, I mean, I could not even have scripted a story like this. No. no. We've never seen anything like this. And just in terms of the way that Antonio was basically communicating through the fans to the team, he was using social media as a proxy without having to actually directly I don't know, address the problem. And maybe he, ha- he like we've said, we don't know all of the... Com- there's, right. We don't have cameras in every single room of Antonio right. Brown's house and everybody whatever. else. Thank God. Even though we would like to. <laughs> but we do not. I doubt it. But that's the thing is that he was basically playing this out in the public as this was going on. And right. everybody else was finding this out. Be like, did you see AB's YouTube? And different people at different ages are, are hooked into different social media accounts too. So he's taking that into account because he's putting those videos up on YouTube first and sharing them everywhere else. That's He's going to the kids first. Right. Well, and I, and I said when that video came out Friday – which was very well done because it and, and I and I, I saw an article on a website that credited him for being a great video maker and I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, did that zero himself. Percent you know, yeah, he did it on his iPhone. Yeah. Um, but but to me, when that video came out Friday, I said it at the time. I did not know about the fine letter. He had already received the fine mm-hmm. letter, which he basically decided, and and the fact that he wasn't going to get his guaranteed money. Yep. Um, but when I saw the video, I said, look, he doesn't want to play football. And I was wrong. He didn't want to play football for the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but when that video, that was an FU video. That was oh, the video. Absolutely. That was the sign. Yep. He was basically saying, "I'm done with you. FU, release right. me." Right. right. He didn't. He, he didn't do that until the next morning with Instagram. But uh, but at the same time, that's what he was saying. And so what I found crazy was some Raider fans. Oh man, this this, this video is awesome. It's awesome. I'm like what? He just basically told you, I'm out. Yeah, he just gave middle fingies to both, all of the Raiders. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what he did. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no way he does not love football. When you see his work ethic and you see him working out, and you see, there's only a few people that work that hard to, to be the top of their craft, yeah. and he's one of them. So there's no way he doesn't love football and he didn't want to play football. Absolutely. He just wanted the situation to be the best situation he could be in to get that ring. Yeah, just look at the final scene of Hard Knocks Boy, this you're, week. You're, in, you're, the, in the pool, in the pool on the bike, with the ball you're, you're machine. Giving, you're giving him way too much credit about winning a ring. What? I, I think no, he just wanted I'm, what he wanted. No, no, no. If I'm a player and I'm in his situation, but I've he's already not, done enough. He's not that mindset. I don't I think believe he is. is. You got to be. All he just wants he's to be the center of attention. Mindset. You know what helps your brand? Rings. Yeah. And if you want to be the center center of attention, you, you want to be in the, the Super Bowl and you get rings, man. Yeah, but but branding and winning, you have to you have to be a teammate, and he's not a teammate. He he's will. An individual. He, he will. Sure. But this is I the pre-patriot way. We're seeing before he goes in <laughs> yeah. the, into the asylum. We'll I see say. What comes on the way out. I say three weeks before something happens. 
That's um, what I'm saying. See, I don't think I'm we'll hear from him all, all right. I don't, I don't either. I'll take the over on that. We, uh, we got to step aside here at the bottom of the hour. When we come back, Mo Moten. Yes, our uh, new senior NFL columnist at yeah, SilverMoneyToday.com and a contributor here. He'll straighten this whole situation out for us. <laughs> he will. Uh, Mo Moten will be back with us here on the Silver and Black Today on CBS Sports Radio, 1140. The only way to take Silver and Black today with you is with the Radio.com app. Download it today and search CBS Sports Radio 1140 in Las Vegas and listen to us anytime, anywhere. Happy Sunday, the first Sunday of NFL football of the 2019 season. Finally. Oh, let me swallow some glass. I could be Scott Farrell, but I can't be. This guy eats your glass guy. for breakfast. All right, listen, we are back here live from Bally High Golf Club. In the shadow of Allegiant Stadium right behind us here. <laughs> and we are no. live from the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Childhood Asthma Foundation. So thank you for being with us. And we yep. appreciate that. And we also, you heard in the break, the big news, the Finley Chevrolet Studio back at Sports uh, CBS Sports 1140. You want to thank uh, Trent uh, back there and Colin. And also on site, our executive producer, as always, Mr. Mark Bonilla, as I call him, Marky Bones. How's it going, Scott? Marky Mark. Marky Bo- Marky it's Bones. It's a beautiful day out here at it's Valley High. It's a beautiful day. It was windy this okay. morning. We were discussing. We are like, we're going to go outside, but my tent will blow away. I knew you were really cautious about your tent. Yeah. So that's why we're inside, but <laughs> yeah. that's fine. You can camera all you want. I think it's his toupee he's worried about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that- <laughs> oh, man. What are you talking about? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, my so, yeah, goodness. So, yes, much appreciation to Colin. I had to send him back to you the station. It oh, it's Colin, not, not Trent. No, but right. Trent is also running around the building for other stations, which is fine. Look All at, of the producers. So we're, we're working very, very, I'm very doing, hard today. I'm doing a, since we're on location. I'm doing a little handheld camera. Like this camera. handheld camera mic yeah, over here with have, uh, iPhone number sixteen. Wow. Yeah. And and Only yes, and, and Mark's getting some screen time. Hey, All you right. got somebody on the phone. We got somebody on the phone, and that is yes, we do. As a matter of fact, and we're excited to bring in as Our we number one draft. Pick. We announced this week um, some news, and that was that uh, Mo Moten, of course, you know from Bleacher Report and. Uh, from NFL Spin Zone, Mo is now our senior NFL columnist at SilverAndBlackToday.com, and he will be a regular contributor here on Silver and Black Today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Mo, good morning, brother. How are you? I'm good. Just saying good morning to the crew for the first time. I hope you guys yeah, have some Mo. with all the AB news over the past couple of days, but probably not if you're like me. Yeah. Your, your fingers got to be worn out from Twitter, man. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I... What, <laughs> I had to tweet through the whole thing. I just had. To. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it was it was crazy, Mo. Um, and and we'll, we'll of course start with Antonio Brown. You know, you've been you've been covering the league and writing professionally for over five years. Um, this situation, this story, ha- has been absolutely crazy. Um, when when this all started to unfold on Thursday, talk to me kind of your me- your your mental state. What did you go through, and wh- when did you reach the point where you said, "Okay, this is not going to happen. This is not going to work. This guy will not be a Raider come Monday night." Uh, when, once he posted the, the first fine on his IG account, a lot of people was like, "Oh, it's no big deal. Who's happy about getting a fine?" And they're right. right. Who is happy about getting fine with money? But who actually? take that fine, go to social media and post it for everyone to see and then blame <laughs> the people for finding you for something that you did. And that was my sticking point was the Raiders find him for missing a walkthrough in Winnipeg. That's not the Raiders' fault. That's his fault. So he's, he's screaming at the Raiders. He's calling them haters for something that he did. And I don't think people understood that. And, and at that point, I'm thinking either there's something wrong with Antonio Brown or we're missing something. You know, mm-hmm. And at that point, people were saying, well, it'll blow over. It'll blow over. And then it comes out that he had a conversation with Mayock Wednesday, of course. And I will say this really quick before I got on air with you guys. There was a report that came out that said he sought social media expert advice on how to get out of the situation with the Raiders. And that's why he posted. Wow. Well, that's right before he posted the final IG. So it makes sense. 
Wow, yeah, and, and I think that's that's where that, that's where we've been, Mo, and, and, and Lindsay talked about it earlier on the show, too, that uh, she felt from the very beginning that this was all purposeful and that there was a bigger plan here, yep. right. and so she was right. Um, and and um, to me, though, when you start to unpeel this, and, and Mo, we talked to, since we're here at the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament, we talked to a lot of former NFL players this morning, Chaz and I, uh, together and separately, and 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 uh, most of them, including some guys, and again, I'm keeping their names private to, to protect them, but most of them said they believe that at some point this became the plan. And certainly now with this news that you've brought to us this morning about the fact that, that someone uh, that he sought out social media helped to, to, to help him navigate this and actually be purposeful about it, just kind of underscores what I think a lot of fans thought, and that was to jump to that "quote unquote" conspiracy theory, which now seems not to be so much of a conspiracy. Yep. Well, it was a All conspiracy, right. it, <laughs> I should say. It, it, the thing is, you don't know if we really don't know how if, if the Patriots were in on this, but we, but based on these reports, we can we do know that Antonio Brown at some point probably before he, again, posted the IG, the uh, final IG, that he decided he didn't want to be a Raider. And instead of coming out and saying I didn't want to be a Raider, it's kind of like, and I, I heard you guys mention it, it's kind of like, I'm going to make the Raiders break up with me versus me looking like the bad guy and saying I don't want to be. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely true, Mo. I think that um, with them and, and what, what happened here is is a cautionary tale, right? Which is, and and Chaz said it, I think best earlier, and that was that you know you take you take a risk on somebody, and would I have taken that risk? Absolutely, I would have taken that risk. But guess what happened? They took the risk, and the it blew up in their face. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And so, um, if you were John Gruden and Mike Mayock, would you have taken that risk too? Oh, absolutely, and then. Okay, I'll, I'll phrase it this way. If I'm rooting and I'm an offensive mind, I want offense and I want to win some games after having a miserable points all season, yes, I would. But I don't know if you checked out my Twitter account uh, early this morning. I posted a clip of Antonio Brown talking to Jeff Jarlin. And there was a quote that he said that troubled me a little bit that maybe raised my red flag. He said, and then Jeff Jarlin said, okay, you know, GMs aren't going to want your antics or they're going to, you know, they're going to want you to act a certain way. And this is, this is exactly what he said. He said, they're going to have to play by my rules. If they want to play, they're going to play by my rules. And right. if I'm hearing a player say something like that, and I have a young locker room, and I know i got draft all these first-round draft picks I'm going to use, and I want to mold young talent to professionals, I don't want a guy in there in my locker room who has that message. It's just not a good message. And I, I would have, me personally, I would have stayed away from him, but knowing Gruden, with the mindset of who Gruden is, I understand why he did it. Antonio Brown's an elite talent. You take a chance. It's only a third or fifth round pick because if it works and it pays off, that's a big boom. But if, if yes. it blows up, you know, whatever. It, but I, right. I wouldn't I would have touched it. And it didn't cost us that much, you know, with, with uh, the draft picks. Now, the, well, the thing we were talking about earlier is, is did the front office do enough? Um, you know, could they have done things differently? Now, we saw in Gruden's um, press conference yesterday, he kept complimenting the front office and the players and, and – um, you know, we exhausted all of our resources trying to trying to help this guy work with this guy. In your opinion, do you think they could have done things differently, or was it already a foregone conclusion? They, there's nothing they could have possibly done. Drew, Drew didn't bend over backwards, did a handstand, did a backflip, did a three sixty, <laughs> and, and none and none of and just none of that worked. He he just didn't want to be there. It, once a person doesn't, it's just like a relationship. Again, once a person doesn't want to be with you, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Money, gifts, cards, there's nothing you can do to make that person stay if they want to go. No, you're, you're absolutely – I agree with you, Mo, on that one. Um, and if you look at that situation, I, I really felt some of the unfair criticisms towards the radio organization was on the good cop, bad cop, which Steve Mariucci actually proved my point right on the NFL Network this week when he said, listen, my mistake with Terrell Owens – was that when, when he went out on the star in the middle of the field in Dallas and I had to suspend him, I was the hard guy. I was the guy who came down on him, and it ruined our relationship. It was never the same again. If I would have had the GM at the time do that for me and kept the relationship with the player, then it would have been a different outcome. Do you agree with me on that, that they played that well as well? I think they did it the right. They did it well. But if, if Antonio, let's say Antonio Brown did want to play for the Raiders and he was just a, you know, doing, he had his antics or whatever. 
that it, it's done the right way because ultimately you want your head coach and your player to be on the same page and you want your player to trust the head coach because the GM is kind of kind of the overseer. You never see the GM every day. But you are going to be with your head coach at meetings and, and, you know, scripting on the field with plays and things of that matter. So, yeah, they handled it the right way. It's just with the wrong player. Yeah, no, that's exactly how front office is supposed to be structured. You know, it's, it's, right. there's a lot of things we I talked about earlier with the ownership. Now, I don't know. Some owners are hands off. Some owners are hands on. You see Jerry Jones involved a lot. But, you know, it's, it's the pecking order. It starts with the owner, the general manager, you know talks to him, then the gen- coach talks to the general manager, and so on. So you need to have that pecking order, and, and, and I agree, they just played it perfectly. There's nothing else they could have done. Now, Mo, in the, in the last few minutes we have with you, um, what about this team now? You you go in, uh, I expected them to win uh, six games. That was my prediction before the season began. I know that you've revised yours based on the drama and the loss of Antonio Brown. Starting on Monday, What do you? how do you think this season now, at least at this point, before we we see them play, of course. How do you think this pans out, and what happens with the Raiders in 2019? I said this on Twitter, and I got a lot of blowback. A lot of people weren't happy <laughs> about it. But, um, as you know, I had the Raiders winning five, six games with Antonio Brown. Uh, again, it's a rough schedule. It's a young team. I think the defense is probably going to be one of the worst in the league, if not the worst defense in the league. Again, they don't have an all-pro, all-pro bowl player on that defense. I don't know if any other team apply, you know, falls to that category, but the Raiders do. Defense is going to yep. struggle. Now their offense is okay. I don't know if that offense can win many shootouts. I know Terrell, people like Terrell Williams, but he's not our number one. If I see them going 3-13 right. and 13 or 4-12, and 12, a lot of people, again, a lot of people are not happy about that. And they say, well, we got better, so we should be better than last year's 4-12 and 12 record. Now, if you look at it that way, every other team, uh, there are a lot of teams that got better. So is every, <laughs> is every team going to have a better record? No. So you have to look at schedule. you got to look at your, you know, when you play certain teams. And I just think there is a 3-4 win team this year, unfortunately. Yep. And we're relying on a lot of first and second year guys. So Yeah, you know. and, and, and Mo, I think too, again, and people, I, I have friends tell me, and I, I've revised mine down from six to between four and five. Um, but mm-hmm. to me, I, I think a lot of people really underestimate how difficult that schedule is. I think they don't understand the grind. They don't understand being eight weeks on the road, um, in essence, not having a home game, what that means. To me, that is the great equalizer, not equalizer, that's the great negative here, that even if they were an improved team by three games, even if they went to seven or eight game uh, from a talent perspective, and I don't know that they are, but let's say they were, with that schedule, it's it, two of them. It's going to be very difficult to even have a chance in. Um, is to me? Do you agree with me on that one, or is it simply just they're not there with talent yet? It's it, again, you're not gonna, you're not playing the same schedule you played last year. So people are saying, yeah, we won four games last year. We got better. We're going to win seven, eight games. Doesn't work that way. You're not playing the same <laughs> schedule, and you're and you're right. You're playing. You're, the Raiders are going to play the NFC North division, and as, I don't know if you watched the Green Bay Packers and the Bears. But if the Green Bay Packers play, that defense plays the way they did, they have good defenses in those in those in that division. So Carr may struggle a little bit. You're going to have to score some points. And again, if Tyrell Williams is your number one wide receiver, defenders are going to cover him one on one. This is not Antonio Brown. He's not going to draw a double team. You got a tight end who's learning the position in Darren Waller. You got a rookie running back who I think is going to have a pretty good year. Can Tom Cable protect Derek Carr because he has this history uh-huh. of having bad pass protection? So all yep. those things are still concerns with a team that's still young. That's right. Well, Mo Moten, uh, welcome to the team. A senior NFL columnist now for SilverAndBlackToday.com. Of course, he also writes at Bleacher Report and uh, over at NFL Spin Zone, and he will be a regular contributor here on Silver and Black Today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. All right, enjoy your first day of the NFL season, Mo, and we will talk to you very, very soon. Yep. Thanks, Mo. Thanks to you guys. Appreciate you guys uh, welcoming me to the team. Look forward to the season. All right. Yep. Mo Moten's with us here live from Valley High Golf Club. The Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Foundation. We'll be back right after this message with Jesse Reed. We're going to close the book on Hard Knocks. You're listening to Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. You found the most in-depth coverage of the Silver and Black. This is Silver and Black today, live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Welcome back to Silver and Black Today here in 
The City of Lights, the City of Las Vegas, Nevada. We are live from the Bally High Golf Club at the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Childhood Asthma Foundation. If you have not been screened, if your kids have not been screened, help save lives, folks. Get them out. Make sure you screen folks for asthma. 11 children die each day. That's right. 11 kids die each day. That's parents who lose their children, kids who lose their life. We never know what they could have done had they grown up and had their asthma monitored and taken care of. So make sure you go do that right away. Do not delay. But we are out here for that event. Yep. Uh, the golfers are out there. We would talk to a bunch of Raiders yeah. before the show began. Uh, Mervin Fernandez, Jay Schrader. Doki Williams. Doki Williams was out there. Of course, yeah. Icky Woods is going to join us later. Yeah, I went by the park yesterday. Icky Woods was doing the, uh, the screenings That's for right. the asthma. So I stopped by over there. They had a little... Uh, thing going on nice little turnout that's great people that's getting awesome. screen for asthma so it's 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 a great uh, great thing he's doing absolutely very very important that's why we're here all right now we're going to go back out on the attorney michael troiano newsmaker line as we bring in jesse reed from sports not we're going to close the book on hard knocks episode five now jesse i have to tell you i think that the, all of us here at the table our favorite point of hard knocks episode five where there's these voices uh, yeah. From some radio station, and and we thought that was one of the highlights. <laughs> it was the highlight. I did too. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> of course, we did. But we were we were happy to be a part of it. Uh, it was a nice little surprise. But but Jesse, when you look at Hard Knocks now in light of what happened with Antonio Brown over the last seventy two hours, how did you like the way that this season ended following the Raiders? Well, talk about irony, right? Um, the the last show of the season uh, opened up with John Gruden and Metallica, but then it quickly pivoted <laughs> to Antonio Brown. Five full minutes of Antonio Brown, um, you know, and then at the very end, after all the cuts were made, after it was moved, we're moving on to the regular season, another full almost two minutes of Antonio Brown working out in his pool. You know, so they kind of framed the whole last episode around Antonio Brown, and whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Jesse, I have to tell you, though, I think that in some ways, because as, as Chaz mentioned earlier, the, um, the, the Raiders had final approval on the edits, right? But in some yeah. ways, it almost, if you look back at it now, it was a little bit of foreshadowing outside of a couple interactions. I mean, he showed up at the high school game, signed autographs uh, up there in Northern California. Uh, but very few shots did you see him with the team. Um, now, of course, he wasn't in workouts and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it was um, it was interesting to show that the last scene in Hard Knocks was him working out in his pool away from everybody else. And sure enough, that was pretty prophetic. Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, you know, even before in one of our previous conversations, we discussed how even, while, even before everything kind of blew up, he was um, seemingly struggling to be a part of the team. He was, he was always kind of a little bit set aside. Uh, there was a really uh, salient picture that I saw on social media of the whole team huddled up, uh, like doing probably their you know end of practice break. And Antonio Brown was aside. He was away from the whole team, like stretching, doing his own thing. It just seems like that's been his thing the whole time. It has been, and um, you know we're. We're running out of time, Jesse. Sorry, because we're on, on, on location. But did Hard Knocks this year, um, not just not specifically about the Raiders, but has the series gained any steam? Do you think it's just kind of maintaining what it's been? Or what this year do you think maybe they did that might bring some people back? Was it simply that it was just the Raiders? Honestly, I think that they did a poor job um, overall. Mm -hmm. It was disappointing that they didn't really show any of the you know, cut conversations except for um, uh, Gunther talking to uh, the linebacker who got cut. I was hoping right. to see Mike Mayock. The, the access that was not provided was pretty um, telling. So I, was hoping, I was hoping for a lot more, and I know everybody else was too. So I feel like they have to do a better job next year with whichever team they take. Uh, that team needs to allow more access, and we've seen that in the past, and the Raiders didn't provide it. And it, there was some great plus, plus stories, but it just didn't kind of hit the way that I was hoping it would. 
Jesse Reed from Sports Not. Thank you, man, for being with us all season when it came to Hard Knocks. We'll have you on to talk some more football the rest of the year. Jesse Reed from Sports Not. We're going to step aside when we come back more as the Silver and Black Today rolls on here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. You found the most in depth coverage of the Silver and Black. The nation and the league arrive in Las Vegas in 2020. Live from the CBS Sports Radio 1140 studios, it's Silver and Black Today. Join the conversation by calling 702-889-5978. And now, here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Welcome back to Silver and Black Today here on the first NFL Sunday. We're coming to you live on location from the Bally High Golf Club, located on the famous Las Vegas Strip for the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Childhood Asthma Foundation. Eleven kids a day die from asthma in this country. Should not happen. Get you and your kids screened for asthma. Save lives, folks. Let's do it. Uh, but we are back talking Raider football on the first Sunday of the NFL season. And we're going to go out now again on the attorney Michael Troiano newsmaker line. And we bring in one of our favorite guys in all of the NFL media out of KOA in Denver, NFL analyst Benjamin Albright. Ben, uh, let me ask you this question. Antonio Brown, you were pretty you were pretty poignant with your comments from the get go when the Raiders traded for him. Are you are you surprised at all how it ended? No, not at all. And I I don't think. (laughs) Yeah, I've yeah. always found that in my life, the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. And Antonio Brown has been like this since Central Michigan. Uh, he's, he's been a diva. He's been out of touch with reality. It's been all about himself. Um, the Steelers, that they managed to find a way to uh, to work with it for so long uh, is really kind of a testament to the credit of that organization. But good on the Raiders for getting out from under it uh, when it became obvious. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to manipulate the situation to get out and, you know, good on the Raiders for finally recognizing that and getting out from under him. All right, let's shift to the Broncos now. Um, as, as, as probably like everybody else, I'm a little bit tired of talking about Antonio Brown, uh, Benjamin. But when you look at this Broncos club rolling into Monday night, one of the big calls uh, early on was, of course, to go out and sign Joe Flacco. How is that working so far? How has that leadership been for the offensive side um, in, in Denver? And how do you think it's going to play out uh, for the rest of the season? Well, um, you know, I think that there's an expectation level uh, that he's going to be better than the last few kind of plug-and-play guys that they've had over the last couple of years, and certainly they need that. Uh, The post-Tate Manning era has been littered with the bodies of uh, mediocrity at quarterback. (laughs) Going back to bringing Mark Sanchez in, Trevor Simeon, Paxton Lynch, Brock Osweiler, Chad Kelly, Case Keenum. It's a who's who of nobody at quarterback. Yeah. so we're trying to, you know, they're trying to show Flacco thing. I, I thought he looked pretty good in camp. Uh, we get to see a lot of him in the preseason, but I, I thought he looked pretty good in camp. Um, you know, of course, statistically, he probably had his best season in this offense when Gary Kubiak was the offensive coordinator out there in Baltimore. It's the same offense. So, um, you know, I, I think he's going to be all right. Um, I think the question really is, is you know, who's going to step up out of these skill position players? We saw Phil Lindsay kind of be the engine that made everything run last year, but they don't have a lot of vertical speed. Manuel Sanders is really it, and he's, you know, over 30 and coming off an ACL. So they need somebody to keep safety out of the box. And they need somebody beside the manual to be able to do that, and I don't know who that's going to be on this team. Lindsey Brown here. Just a question. First year head coach, Vic Mangino from the Chicago Bears had a great defense with them last year. How do you think he's doing in terms of revitalizing uh, Von Miller and, and Chubb and bringing back that defense to, to the glory that was just a couple of years ago? Um, well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a scheme shift. Um, the last few years, uh, dating back to Wade Phillips, this has been a, a cover one or cover zero defense, meaning they've been in man, you know, most of the time. Vic Fangio likes to run uh, umbrella zone. Uh, it's a little bit of a, of a scheme shift. I think it benefits 
the defensive backs, you know, they were complaining last year. They were getting tired specifically uh, in the Kansas City game where they were chasing Tyreek Hill all over the field for three quarters. And then, you know, you're just gassed by the time the fourth quarter comes up. So uh, I think it will help keep the defense pressure late. We've, we've seen, you know, Vic's defenses before in the NFL. He has the resume and the cachet to be able to claim that, um, you know, that they're going to be productive. I think that you're probably looking at a defense that uh, is going to generate maybe fewer sacks than it used to, but certainly more turnovers uh, having those safeties back there in zone. Hey, Benjamin, we saw maybe it, you, you switch back to the offense. Um, the offense a little sluggish in the preseason, the third down efficiency and, uh, and uh, the turnovers. Um, have you seen enough from Flacco? Do you think the, the offense is going to be able to? My, my opinion I, of the Broncos is maybe they're going to be 4-9 and nine and then they bring Drew Locke in to end the season. How, how do you see the, the season playing out? I, I don't think they're going to be that bad. Um, I, I think they're going to be kind of a middling team more than anything. And I see them more as a 500 football team. Drew Locke, of course, he's hurt right now. He is the future, and he looks very, very good in practice. Yep. But he's probably a full year away. If they could get him some snaps this year, that'd be cool. But um, you know, I don't know if they value that as a priority. If they're just kind of set the tone. I, I think this is, you know, look at this defense. It's it's going to be very good. Um, yep. The offense has some potential. It really just hinges on that offensive line. You know, you've got uh, you brought Mike Munchak in, who's a Hall of Fame coach, but. The talent level and, and the, the health kind of leaves you scratching your head. you got Garrett Holes on the left side, who's perhaps affectionately known as Garrett Holes around the league. <laughs> uh, and then right next to him, you've got a rookie, Adult Reisner. Uh, next to him, you got Connor McGovern, who's playing center for the first time and spraying snaps everywhere in camp. Uh, and then over on the right side, where you've got all your money invested in Ron Leary and Juwan James. Neither of those guys have exactly been the picture of health uh, over the years. So, you know, there's, there's some concerns concern about this offensive line, and I think that's really where this team hinges. You know, guys start dropping like flies, but yeah, this could be bad. They, they, could, they could be a three or four win team over the course of the year. If they can yeah, stay healthy, so you know, they could be 500. And speaking of health, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, is he showing signs uh, maybe lost a step, or is he back to 100%? How's he looking? I think he's back to 100%. I think he's going to surprise people. Um, he played a little bit in that, that third preseason game, or I guess it was their fourth preseason game since they played right. the Hall of Fame game. But uh, I thought he looked sharp. I, it's, it's a modern miracle how quickly people can recover from that uh, these it's, days. It's amazing. It used to be a career ender, you know. Um, yep. I, I thought he looked pretty good. The key, the question really is, though, who's going to be the guy opposite him? Cortland is kind of a you know a four-route guy, back shoulder, fade, fly kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the other guy that really works the field opposite Emmanuel, and that's that's they're hoping it'll be it'll wind up being Noah Fant, but right now he's the number two tight end behind Jeff Hireman. Well, and I, I, Benjamin, I think I think that the the Broncos are actually being underrated. I agree with you there. I think if you look in that division, um, they're clearly the, the the favorite in that third spot to be around five hundred uh, with the Raiders behind them. Uh, and 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 that 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 can benefit a team, can it not? Uh, when you don't have a lot of buzz around you, a lot of people are writing you off because they they look at the situation there with them going younger in certain positions and trying to get back to where they want to go. Um, when you look at their schedule as well. Where, where do you think that they're going to make that kind of bread and butter for them for this season? What's going to be the stretch of schedule uh, to, to really to kind of make sure that they get to where they want to go in 2019? Well, we'll be able to tell pretty quick, um, you know, how the season's going to go. They, you know, obviously, the Raiders start the season, but then you've got a three-game stretch where, you know, you've got Chicago, Green Bay, and Jacksonville. And, you know, you probably need to win two of those games Um three of those games uh, out of the first four in order to really kind of set the tone because overall on paper, this is the second toughest schedule in the NFL uh, this season to only Houston. So, um, you know, I think we'll know within the first five or six games where, you know, where Denver's headed and then they can kind of figure it out from there, whether they bring Locke back off the IR, give him the reps, and, you know, and kind of, I don't want to say tank the season, but uh, turn it over to the rookie to, you know, to get him reps or whether Joe Flacco really is the answer, and they're trending towards maybe a playoff spot or a wild card. 
Again, we're being joined by Benjamin Albright, uh, who, who who does the Bronco Country Show on KOA up in Denver, but also an NFL analyst. Now, Benjamin, when we look at the Broncos franchise, it's been a model franchise. Of course, uh, Pat Bowen passes away after the, the battle with Alzheimer's. Um, you look at that organization, it's in flux. Uh, what, are you, what are you hearing about ownership? We hear even in Las Vegas, some Las Vegas names associated with perhaps trying to become uh, own, in, in the ownership group there in the Fertitas. Uh, what are you hearing lately about that future and about the future of the franchise? Well, they've got a trust set up, um, you know, as far as that goes. And it's going to wind up being one of the kids, um, whether or not they sell off ownership stakes later. Uh, but I'll tell you that if you're, a, if you're there in Vegas and they've got odds up on the board, I would place everything I have on Brittany Bull and eventually being the controlling owner. Great. Yeah, no, that's that's good to know because I know I know the, the stability there. Of course, for an organization going through changes and trying to get back to where it wants to be, as far as being a championship football club, you want to be able to do that. So, uh, very good. All right, Benjamin. So, give me your prediction. What is Monday night going to look like for the Broncos and the Raiders? Uh, I think you'll see a little bit uh, of sloppiness on offense. You know, uh, it's it's the early of the season, and teams aren't playing guys the preseason as much as they used to. So you're going to see a little sloppiness and timing issues uh, on the offense. I think that what's really going to come down to which team gets the run game ramped up first, whether that's the Raiders, that beefy line, and Josh Jacobs, or whether it's the Broncos with their suspect line, but two-headed Jabberwocky of Royce Freeman and, uh, and Philip Lindsay. And I think whichever one gets the run game going first is going to open play action first, and I think that team will win. Um, I suspect that Denver's defense will help carry them a little bit better, and that's got Denver 23-17. 23-17, all right. Benjamin Albright, KOA in Denver, of course, also NFL analyst and uh, one of our favorite guys out there. Benjamin, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Take care. All right, Benjamin Albright with a preview of the Broncos game there. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the game and give you our yeah. point of view on how things will roll out for the Raiders and the Broncos uh, Monday night, tomorrow night, yeah. folks. Let's talk about the Raiders. Raider Nation Woo! starts to it. roll around. All right, Brown. Let's we're going to the Raiders. We're going to step aside when we come back. The show rolls on here on the Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Las Vegas. Hey, this is Tim Brown, Hall of Famer. You're listening to Silver and Black today. Now that yeah. is a Raider wide receiver. That is a guy who put his team before anybody else. Yep. You're back on the Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140, live from the Valley High Golf Club on the Las Vegas Strip for the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit the Javante Woods Childhood Asthma Foundation. Again, 11 kids die per day in this country from asthma. Get screened. Get your kids screened. Uh, don't let it get the best of you. We're back talking Raider football. And a reminder, a couple of things we want to talk about. Tomorrow, of course, tomorrow, Monday Night Football, the Raiders kick off the season against the Broncos in the late game. There's two games tomorrow. We will be with you here on CBS Sports Radio 1140 from 3 to 6 p.m., at the Great American Pub for the rotation. Woo. Lindsey Brown, Paul Ihander, and myself will be there. They will have drink and food specials. If you're looking for a spot to watch Monday Night Football, to watch the Ra- – come on, bring your Raider gear. Come on, Raider, Raider Nation. Nation. Come on in to the Great American Pub. We're going to have some hats to give away, some silver and black today, hats, some stickers, all kinds of stuff, uh, and we'll be there, too, with other giveaways. We have stuff from the station, movies, sunglasses. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Right? Yeah. The flatbreads are unreal. The flatbreads are unreal. That's awesome. right. You, you, you demolished the flatbread yes. last time. That yes, was very I, did. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so come out for that. Also, reminder, just under 30 days, Chaz, yourself... Kelly Kreiner and I will be in London Yes, as we will be doing our show live from the Tottenham Spurs Stadium. Good time over there. In jolly old London uh, for the Raiders versus the Bears. Uh, Bears. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to join us, you can. You can come with us. Yeah. Yes. That's easy. And Chaz is willing to pay for all, all of your food when you're over there. No, just kidding. Oh, uh, but sure. you can join us, <laughs> london2019.silverandblacktoday.com, our partners at Travel Bee. You can schedule your whole trip to them. It's so easy. Yep. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime trip as the Raiders head to London to take on the Bears. All right, guys, let's jump into this Broncos game, this Monday night football game uh, that we're coming up. The Raiders' first game of the season, of course, uh, after all this drama and everything that's happened with Antonio Brown. They finally 
get to play football. Uh, we talked to Benjamin Albright in the last um, part of the show to, to, to talk about the game. Um, I look at this game, guys, and I see it's going to be a really close contest. Benjamin said 23-17 Broncos. Chaz, let's start with you on this one. Uh, what do the Raiders have to do to win this game? Benjamin's wrong. He knows he's wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd like to see the defense step up. As uh, Benjamin was talking about, the, the Broncos' offense is a little rusty. I'd like to take advantage of that fact. You know, we, we um, get maybe a couple of turnovers and um, maybe a little more of the same what we saw in the preseason with the Arizona game. We mix it up with the schemes and um, bring the pressure on Flacco since, um, you know, they're not all on the same page yet. And, and uh, uh, first-year head coach, it's going to take a little bit of uh, get the kinks worked out. So I'd really love to see the defense step up. And we know what the offense is capable of. So, um, you know, if we just keep doing more of the same what we did in the preseason, um, keep, you know, a nice clean game, turnovers and penalties to a minimum, uh, I think we're going to come out of there. Like you said, it's going to be close, but I think the Raiders will get a victory. What about that defense, Chaz? I mean, look, it's a big test for the Raiders, that off, that, that rebuilt offensive line, very solid offensive line, and for Josh Jacobs, a running back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're, they're still known. You know, they're not the Orange Crush defense, but they're, they're still known for their defense. And um, so I know, I know Gruden's going to have a great game plan, and um, I think we should be able to skirt around the, the major players that they have on defense, Von Millers, and, uh, and uh, the pressure that's going to be coming. Obviously, you know, we're missing some of the offensive line, and it's going to be a little bit of a pass work so i know that they've got some plays that mix in there that'll, that'll keep everything off balance Lindsay, drama aside if you look at this game for the raiders and look what the broncos have done in the offseason look how the raiders have continued to recycle their roster um and and for you what's the big storyline in this game for the raiders for their ability to be able to win it I think the biggest thing that they need to focus on is getting off to a good start, having a really good first initial drive on both sides of the ball because there has been so much chatter and drama around this team that we haven't talked about that much, just the actual football part of this. This right. is that. This is what the actual product yes, is. We forget we about it. And and I think that not only does that, if, if they go out and say they're on offense and Derek Carr goes, just has a great drive, seven points, puts them up there, the defense goes out there, shuts them down, has yep. a good thing. That confidence is not going to, uh, is going to help the fans. It's going to shift the media focus a little bit, just in terms of being like, okay, maybe they're a little more focused than we than we thought they would be. Right. But also for the team themselves, they need to prove to themselves that they're more than Antonio Brown's story and all this other crap that's been going on. And the way that they do that is going out with the first drive. Right, and get that early confidence. Right, and, and that's whether, the, whether or not they have a good drive is not going to tell everything about the season right. but I think that's important for that for the in-game mentality and it it does set a little bit of a course if it's, it's if they go out there and it's at a complete gong show it's gonna be a long game no, and no. it's gonna well, be a long season you know it's a home game and so yep. they're gonna draw off of the home fans and yep. the energy from the home crowd and, and um, here's the one thing that Derek Carr he's only 340 yards away from being the all-time Raiders yards Is passing that serious? leader yeah Derek Carr's about the, yeah, I mean if wow. he, by the end of the season he'll have uh, the most touchdowns in Raiders history as well. I mean, we're talking LaMonica, Stabler, Plunkett, you know, Rich Gannon. Right. Derek Carr's about to be, you know. Right. Um, Appreciate most, uh, Derek Carr, people. So I think he's going to come <laughs> off to a great start. I think what the Raiders are going to most likely do and what they really like to do is a ball control offense. Mm-hmm. And, and they want to control the clock. They want to control the uh, time of possession. And so we'll see a lot of that, you know. Yep. Uh, hopefully, you know, 8, 10, 12 play drives right. that, that result in scores and uh, just you know keep the ball in our hands as, as much as possible. Well, and to me, that, that I agree with Lindsay and, and you, Chaz. They need to get off to a quick start, and I think two things are going to be particularly important for that. Yes, you have that good defense on the Denver side. You have Vaughn Miller. You have Chubb on the other side. Uh, so we'll know quickly how that offensive line is playing early in the season. Also, it's important to your point, Derek Carr. There's a lot of people, I'm not one of them, there's a lot of people who don't believe Derek Carr still yeah. is the is the guy. I don't get that. I don't get it either. And I've defended him a lot. I take a lot of flack for it. Um, especially for some reason, people like to send me private messages about it. But anyway, um, <laughs> oh to me, Derek Carr, but he does need to get off to a quick start mm-hmm. too. I'm not saying he's got to go down 90 yards and score a touchdown, but he's got to methodically move that offense. To put some of that criticism aside, even though I know in his head he's a positive guy and all that, it's still there. You still hear it, and it still plays a part. So if he can shut that down, I think the other big thing here, and the, the, the one piece that is an intangible that's going to be huge for this team is the fans in Oakland. The last home opener, yeah. it's on Monday night. 
Uh, it's a big deal, folks, and I know they're excited about it, especially coming off the Antonio Brown stuff has continued to galvanize the fans as if they needed it. Um, but 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 I think that's everybody's going to be there. It's going to be a big family. Mm-hmm. People are going to be hyped up and ready to go. So the team is going to have them on their side. That's a huge boost for them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and and the Derek Carr thing is so confusing to me, but I, as, as positive as he is, when I see players like that, I always kind of shift over to the fake it till you make it type of mentality where sometimes you have to prove to yourself that you're okay. And remember, two years ago, they were Super Bowl contenders and oh, they yeah. went out and snapped his leg. Yeah. And yes. then last year happened. So he might not be back to whatever level of confidence he needs to be back at to perform at his highest level or at least return to form that he had a couple seasons ago. Yeah. Well, and Lindsay, you know, the criticism is around um, him going downfield. Oh, he's always dumping the pass off. Now, to me, last year, there was a little bit of that. That was because of the fact that it was a new offense. Now the yeah. second year in the offense, he's going to be much more comfortable. Right, and you said that in like the first couple episodes of Hard Knocks how, to John Gruden about all the little things that he was picking up in year two of being in that system because it is, it's like learning everything you've learned about football but in just different words and different terms and a little bit. It's That's a big thing and that's why these guys get paid so much but... I think that he needs to make sure that he's patient with the ball because obviously with a reinforced line, that's going to help kind of quell a little bit of those dumping chances that you had where he would quickly throw that ball away and not give anybody really a chance because he would get nervous. That's where that confidence piece gets into. That's where, like like you said, Jazz, let's get some run it, run the ball, stay out there for 10, 12, 10, 12 players, 10 minutes even, just go out there and have a good time. Be like, we are controlling this. We are the captains of this ship. All that other stuff. And that's probably what I'm most excited about, too, is uh, seeing Josh Jacobs. We're going to see what Josh Jacobs can do. We're going to see him running the ball. We're going to see him catching passes out of the air. And and, and, uh, Derek Derek can throw the the deep ball. Mm -hmm. It's just it's kind of a West Coast offense, so it is predicated on these these little dump-offs, and it's a tight end heavy offense. So he is only getting, you know, these 5, 10-yard pass completions. But it's it's really going to be great to see Josh Jacobs and uh, see what we can do with that. That, that's what I'm excited. I'm really excited to see him play because we just haven't seen it in the preseason. And I think he's going to be a big part of that offense and part of the passing game. Now, when, when Derek Carr does have to check down, having him underneath there uh, with his ability to break out in the open, his strength mm-hmm. uh, and his running ability is going to be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. But when you look at this game, um, we heard one prediction. Uh, I still think coming off the drama, I know the team says it's focused, but I, I believe that this is going to be a close one, and I think the Raiders lose on a last-second field goal. I'm going to call it 23-21. Unbelievable. The uh, silver and black today in your week one, you're like, hey, no, no, we're not. Pass. We're Lindsay, not Lindsay, Lindsay no, this is not no, a no, no, this no. is no. not a fanboy show. I know. He's a realist. This is. I'm and I'm going. Well, I'm, you have me I'm doing on here. It from I showed a, up and everything ready your, to go. I'm super she's, ready. She's got right. her Vikings. Right. You know, I, did, I did do a little research, and unfortunately, um, only three of the teams that were on um, Hard Knocks for the last you know decade <laughs> or so, only three of them have won their opening game. Whoops. So that, uh, you know, I, I know gamblers out here in Vegas, they're looking at every angle. People and, gamble out here? Uh, a little bit. What? Yeah. And so that, so that was hard. Sure. And we saw, the, we saw the point spread go from the Raiders minus two to the, to the Broncos minus two. And, and a lot of times when I see the point spreads, I usually go against that because I, I like to think that the, the books are trying to make you go one way, make you think everybody's going one way when it's really a misdirection. Just the, the drink cart guy, what everybody was feeling, what people were saying. <laughs> yeah. Get the feel of the So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be a close game as well, but I'm going I'm to go with the uh, the energy from the crowd. And, and after the hard knocks, you know, all the Raider fans are really into it. It's one of the years we're coming out and everybody just feels like they're way more into it than they have been in previous. Right. And, there's, and there's a lot more expectations as well. So um, What's your score? I'm going to go... Um, 20 to 16 Raiders. 20, so keeping it low. What, what was, Lindsay, what was your score? I didn't give a score. I didn't give a prediction yet. And because I'm new to town, I'm smart. Go Raiders. <laughs> by, uh, I'm going to go by a good, uh, we'll Uh-oh. go eight points. Eight points. We'll go 30-22. 30-22 Raiders. Yep. I don't even know if that score makes sense in football That's because okay. I, it's totally fine because you weird things know. happen. You never know. Well, there you go. Uh, I am the only one who's picking the Broncos, and I will hear about that, as I'm sure I am already, in social media channels, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But we're gonna when we come back, we're also going to do Lowdown with Lindsay. Whoa. Now, yes. Kelly's not here again, so we have Kelly's Corner. Yes. So to continue with our mission of alliteration, Yes. We have the lowdown with Lindsay. I like it. Coming up right after this. You're listening to The Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. (laughs) 
This is Silver and Black Today, live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. All right, welcome back to Silver and Black Today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140 AM, Las Vegas' only all Raiders talk show. And Chaz, you were you were roaming around outside and you found somebody. I found my man, you found Andrew a, Glover. You found a guest here, Andrew Glover, of course, Los Angeles Raiders. He's out here. Andrew, you're not out on the golf course, man? Yeah, I have been out on golf course. I'm at the How are you hitting them? It's halftime. Yeah. <laughs> it's halftime. Come in, get a beverage, go back out, right? That's correct. correct. So let's talk about the Icky Woods uh, Foundation, the charity, and uh, everything that's going on out here. Your thoughts and uh, everything you've seen so far today? Well, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great time to get together and support a worthy cause. Icky is a fraternity member and a former player in the National Football League, and I think it's paramount that we come out and show our support for a great cause and uh, get a chance to meet the sponsors, talk to different people, answer questions about football-related questions, take pictures, and, and make it a memorable time and a great event. Yeah. Well, one thing, uh, the one question I always have, with the Raiders moving to Las Vegas next year, um, you were in a similar situation, right? You went from Los Angeles, and then they moved to Oakland. Correct. Um, what, what was it like doing the move? We actually commuted to Oakland. We were in L.A. and we yeah. commuted to Oakland for the games. And, uh, you know, it was all about the love and the support. And we wanted to go out and do our best job and make the team and the fans proud of the things that we were going out trying to accomplish and to try to put the best product that we could on the field. Yeah, because it's win, lose, or draw, we wanted to look good at it. It's a hard balance because you, you want to give the LA fans something, you want to give the Oakland fans something. And, and what would your advice be now with the team moving to Las Vegas with these young younger players moving from Oakland to Las Vegas? Well, I, I think that the players and the organization understands that uh, Vegas has opened its arms and received us uh, great. Gracefully right now, I think we owe a, a great, uh, you know, debt to uh, Vegas and come out and put our best product on the football field. Uh, we are mobilizing people into the community and, and making ourselves, uh, you know, available and talking to people and making sure that not only are we here to play football, but we're here to help to build our brand and support the local community as well. Yeah, and the Raiders have. They've been out full force in the community for over a year now. They're just everything we've seen. Two years, yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been incredible. I mean, we, we, That's our job. It comes with the territory. Yeah. We're not just football players. We role models to a lot of people, and a lot of people look up to us. Yep. We love our fans, and we want to get get and stay as close to them as possible because they give us the fuel to go out on the field and try to accomplish great things each and every day, each and every year. Yeah. Now, Andrew, let's talk a little bit about Raiders football. Uh, starting the season tomorrow night against your favorite team, the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Them and the Chiefs. That's a jab at me. That's a jab. Good no, one. No, no, no. <laughs> Bleeding slowly. Give me a Band-Aid. <laughs> uh, but this team, you know, the way Mike Mayock and John Gruden have rebuilt this team, there's a lot of excitement around it. Offensively, of course, you added some great pieces. Josh Jacobs at running back. Um, you also, on the defense, you have Cleland Farrell. You have uh, the second-year players, Arden Key. These guys look like they're going in the right direction. What do you expect out of this team, being around and being at alumni events? What's your feel for 2019? Well, my feel is that we, we're getting our house in order. And in order to put the best possible product on the field, we need to have the stability in our house and the focus and the determination to go out and do great things. We realize that without our fan base and without the support of Las Vegas, then we can't accomplish the things that we really want to accomplish. So Las Vegas has made the commitment. Oakland has made the commitment for years. L.A. has made the commitment to years. It's our job to make a commitment to the people that made that commitment to us to go out and do our very best work each and every day and put the very best product we can on that football field and go out and fight like hell and try to get the victories. Yeah. That's just the bottom line. All the all the media attention, all the sideshows, all of that business right there is not what's indicative of what we want to bring to Las Vegas. So everybody is not cut out to be a Raider. So uh, if you're not cut out to be a Raider and you don't want to be a Raider and don't want to be in that uniform and, and be committed to excellence, then it's not the place for you. Yeah. Yeah, when you talk to other players um, from other teams, there, there really is something. The more I'm around you guys, the more I spend time around alumni and see how active you are, to see how you're welcomed and still part of the organization. Um, 
what do do other players from other teams come up to you and are they amazed as we are when we look at it from the outside? Yeah, they are. I think we're a model to a lot of the other people in the NFL because uh, Al Davis held us in such high regard and gave us the you know the very best materials we needed to go out and be successful. And he treated us like first class. So that's our job to reciprocate that to other people. So other teams around the NFL, we are a model of success to them. Although it has not translated into victories in the recent in, in recent years, we are still committed to doing that. And that's what kind of karma we're trying to put out there. And we're trying to keep positivity on the team. We do not want exclusivity and we do not want I in team members. We mm-hmm. want to function as a team and function as a wave and we feel like that's the best way to get to the top and to stay back on top. Yep. Great point. No, that's great. And have you had a chance yet to go over and take a tour of the stadium and all of that? And what are your thoughts about that? I have that set up uh, coming up uh, oh, good. Uh, in, in the recent, in the near future. Uh, I have not had an opportunity. Uh, I'm excited about it, but I'm not as excited as a lot of other people because I'm usually the one on the football field. Right. So I got to get, you know, I don't know what happens outside the stadium. And basically uh, all the the, 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 the the side shows and, and, and the tailgating right. and all that. I'm not a privy to how all that partying is going on. <laughs> when I'm a part of the team and organization and when I'm on that football field, it's my job to focus on executing and playing the role that I need to play to help my team get a win. Most important thing. And notice that I didn't say anything about individual accomplishments or achievements. Right. My right. first, the very first thing I want to do is be able to execute a play that we've practiced on and practiced to be able to put our team in a position to make a big play or to win a game. Yep, that's a great message. No, that's fantastic. Now, you're out here again. We're talking to Andrew Glover, former Raider. Um, Andrew, you're, you're here for the Icky Woods Charitable Foundation um, or the Javante Woods uh, Foundation for Childhood Asthma. Talk to us a little bit about what else you're up to. What do you, what do, you do in these days besides the, having the Raiders uh, have you um, be an ambassador and run around and do all of that? Well, I'm a life skills uh, presenter. Uh, after my football uh, career was over with in the NFL, I was a business owner with Sonic Drive-In as a national friend. Franchise in Houston, Texas, for ten years. So I left football and converted to the you know to real world and started and did it in the, in the business world, uh, totally away from football. So yep. I wanted to transition in that and be an example for the guys coming behind me. So and be an example to them and and help other players figure out the things that they need to do and the resources out there to be able to help their family and to keep building on what the Raider uh, you know nation has already built in us. And then that's to go out and be positive role models. Be family men, take care of family, take care of your responsibilities, and come back and be of service to all the people that love and care about us. Yep. Yeah, we were, I was talking uh, before the tournament started this morning, talking to Greg Bell, former Raider and Ram running back, uh, and we were talking about that life skill set, and the NFL players who come out, you know, these guys, not only are they coming into a different time where you have all this social media and you have all these other things that can go wrong, uh, but you also have a lot more money involved now. So when you look at these young guys coming out of college, getting into the NFL, um, is there still a disconnect there? Is there still that needs to be more yeah. d- more done? Yeah, the, I think the biggest disconnect is that, you know, what's happening good for me now and how, how the NFL is taking care of me and, and why I'm playing in the NFL, what they have to realize is one day you're going to be an NFL alumni. And mm-hmm. some of the same things that you're going to go through, uh, we have some players that have paved the way that can, uh, you know, also let you know what, what it's going to be like after football, the things you need to avoid, the, how you, the preparation process, how to, you know, keep, uh, stay and keep a family together. Mm-hmm. If you want to convert into business opportunities, the different resources we have available to guide these guys. If you have di- uh, different things that you need to get your disability and, you know, concussion and been in all this, okay. the former players know the, the, the template for all that. And it's, I feel like it's our job to come back and embrace those younger guys guys when they start getting to the end of their career when they come out and to be there and to support them and to help them keep building on what they've already built so a lot of them really don't i really don't understand that at, at the particular time because you plan you're making money and you get special preferences you're not in the real world once mm-hmm. you convert into the real world then you have to find out what i need to do to make sure that i can come out and prepare and take care of family and run a household and run businesses and convert all the you know the competitive spirit that I had on the football field into the real world and still be a productive citizen. 
That's right. Andrew Glover, former Raider, of course, yeah. out here at the Icky Woods uh, Celebrity Golf Tournament. We thank you for spending time with us. We look forward to seeing you more here yeah, as the team great, comes great to Las Vegas. Me. I will be coming back. I have been working closely uh, with the Raider organization in order to be in a position to help them in anything they need to do in the community, around town, in Southern California, in Northern California, and in Vegas now. I owe a, a, a debt of gratitude to those people, and I'm going to live probably the rest of my life being of service to those same people. People and making sure that we enhance the brand and, uh, you know, make everybody proud. Wow. Amazing. That's great. Thanks, Andrew. Andrew, really thank you for joining you. us. Again, Andrew Glover, former Raider out Thanks here playing me. golf. We appreciate you spending the time here with us on the Silver and Black today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go Raider. That's right. All right. Well, it's time for us to step aside for a break. When we come back, we'll close out the show with Lindsay's Lowdown. You're listening to the Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. On the most in-depth coverage of the Silver and Black. This is Silver and Black Today, live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Here's your host, Scott Gobranson. All right, welcome back to the Silver and Black Today on CBS Sports Radio 1140, live from Valley High Golf Club, the site of the Icky Woods Celebrity Golf Tournament to raise money for the Javante Woods Childhood Asthma Foundation. Uh, and as we appreciate Andrew Glover coming on, and of course, we have another Raider on, and that is our good friend. We see all over Las Vegas, yeah. right, Roy? Yes. Roy Hart, yes. number 61, yes. Yes. is back with us. And Roy, thanks for joining us. How you, Are you swinging the sticks out there? Well, unfortunately, I'm unable to swing the sticks, of course, due to a few little health issues. But, <laughs> okay. but I am here mingling and, and being a part and bringing my environment and my enthusiasm to, to the Icky Woods Golf Tournament and definitely for, for his foundation of, 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 of what he's got going on with asthma and being able to give back. Now, Roy, you, you, you're all over Las Vegas. Of course, the Raiders, Chaz mentioned it when we were talking to Andrew Glover. Uh, the Raiders, for two years, okay, two years before they even, uh, even moving here, yes. have been so involved in the community, and we see you out at almost all of them. Talk about how well-received the Raiders, the Raiders Foundation, and all the work you're doing has been here in the Las Vegas community. It has been large. As a 25-year local, Knowing the valley as I as I, as I as I do, and going to some of the racer booster club events throughout, the Raiders are loved so much. And with them coming to the valley and coming in so strong, military, the children's hospital, yeah, high schools, middle schools, uh, you you really name it. You know the veterans' homes, you name it. The Raiders have stepped in, either the volunteer time, volunteer resources. Make, let, the, let, the, let the Las Vegas Valley know that they're here and they're coming, and it's going to be an exciting time when they get here. Yep. No, it's doubt. And, and obviously this tournament out here of so many former Raiders, other players, I saw Jay Schrader out there. I saw um, who Mervyn else? Fernandez. Oh, Mervyn Fernandez. Yeah, Swerve and Mervyn was out there. Ron well. Brown is out Ron there. Ron Brown is also a former yes. Raider, yes. Doug yes. Williams. All these guys coming out. And that's the thing, too. And, and Andrew mentioned it as something that was very important to him, and that is, you know, you play in the NFL. You guys work your entire lives to get there, you eventually get there, and then it ends, right? Yes, and, and you yes. Want, but you want to do something. You want to help out those that helped you. And talk about for you how meaningful that is as an individual to take who you were as an athlete, and as you age, as you go through life, you're still there helping people, giving back to those that gave to you. The platform allows you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you continue to just be involved and stay involved, it's easy just to walk up and say, look, this is who I am. This is how I feel. And, of course, starting out of South Georgia as I did and being among some of the incredible peers as NFL football players, it is a fraternity. It's what we did. It's what we love. And it's what we continue to be able to use to be able to give back to the young youth, and of course the valley itself. In any city you, 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 you're in, we have foundations in almost every one of them now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thrilled to be a 25-year local. Yeah, yes. And when I got news that the Raiders was coming to Las Vegas, <laughs> my home is six miles from the stadium. I know, you're like, yes. How more incredible could that be, right? Yeah. And then for those guys also, I only played one year for the Raiders. Yeah. But once a Raider, always That's a right. Raider. Yes. You know, and, and, and they've gotten me involved, and it just makes me feel even more special what? to be involved with the Las Vegas Valley and the Las 
Vegas Raiders. Yes. <laughs> Were you able to go to training camp this year? Oh, my. You know, for the last five years or so, Mr. Davis has invited the former football players up. I don't call us ex-players. No. Former. Because, because we're all former players. That's right. Hey. We're, we're, we're still a Raider. We're still a football player. We're just not active anymore. So he invited us up to summer camp. Put us up for a few days, take us out to different wineries, just just, just wine and dine us, yeah. and really, you know, uh, 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 give us so many incredible little 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 trinkets just of memory, you know, and 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 that's that it just makes you feel even more special. Yeah. This past this this, this past late July, we must have had over a hundred former Raiders wow. up at this event. Yeah. And just to mingle back with the fraternity. You know, I can tell you, people say always, well, what do you miss from the game? The camaraderie. The, the family. Yes, yes. Yep. The, team. the smell of the locker room. Yep. Oh. The roar of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are tough to duplicate in everyday yep. society. And that's you great know, that Mark keeps it the family, keeps everybody together, keeps everybody coming back. Yes, that's and I'm it. talking about, man, we did a huddle break. Mr. Groot got us all together. We did a huddle break. Yeah. Bring the chills back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, what are your uh, thoughts about the team? You got to see a little bit of training camp. I did get to see a little bit of training camp. They look, you know, they, they're coming together. I think they are together. I'm looking for us to have a wonderful season this season. I'm looking for at least a, I'm going to say uh, 10 and 6. Yeah. Five yeah. Record. yeah. yeah. Finally. I'm going to have a 5 record this year. Yes. You know, uh, uh, um, I've, looked, I've looked and noticed the team, the defense is very fast. Very, very tenacious. Yep. Uh-huh. You know, so those are the things that you look for. Our offense, our offensive line is, is big and powerful and strong. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you definitely want to take notice there and run the football, protect protect Mr. Carr, yep. and let it fly. Yeah, we're going to surprise Davis people. Used to say. We're going to surprise the people. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, our division is, is packed now. Yeah. We had two teams that, that make the playoffs last year. Of course, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Diego Chargers. Yep. So we already know that we have our work cut out for us. Yeah, big time. Yeah, no. but, but the Raiders, we're ready. Well, and, and, and we're not going to ask you to pass judgment on anybody here, but the, the events of the last few days, being a Raider, you said once a Raider, always a Raider. And, and every, every Raider I've ever talked to, including those guys like you who played one year uh, or two years, you know, a, a limited time in their career, um, they all have such an aff- affiliation to the organization and feel so good about having been a Raider. When you see others who don't have that, is, that, is, it, just, is it surprising to all of you to see somebody who might not want to be in that organization? You know, when you're playing, I, I get sometimes contracts, things like that change your perspective. But being a Raider and having that badge of honor when you walk around all, uh, every day, is it hard to understand people who don't want to be a part of it? In a sense, it is. But then, you know, everybody's individuals. They're going to make their own decisions and go yeah. their own way. Everybody can't be a Raider. And that's the thing about Ah, good point. You know, so I, I'm just look back on my career and being able to be chose by Mr. Davis. And if you know the Raider story, the Raider history. Mm-hmm. And having Mr. Davis come up and say, I feel as though you are quality enough athlete and person on top of that to come into my organization to help us and make us shine and be better was absolutely special to me. Yeah. So everybody can't be a Raider, is what okay. I tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well said. Roy Hart, want to thank you for joining us. Oh, you look great, man. Yeah. Look oh, great. He, no, this guy's, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. He's having a great time. He needs, to, he needs to work me out. Uh-huh. Uh, but Roy, thank you. And we will see you everywhere because you are everywhere in Las Vegas. And we certainly appreciate your commitment to our community and all that you do. And thank you for coming out and supporting Icky's tournament today as well. Absolutely. It is absolutely fantastic. It is for the kids. Come on. Yeah. So a foundation that's giving back the of course, to a cause that affects every single one of us. Somewhere in our life, some one of us has someone, a cousin, a sister, a brother, aunt, uncle, that has dealt with this bad of asthma. Yep, and absolutely. of course, we can do anything to prevent it in any way to save lives. That's what we're here for. And uh, of course, you know, sorry for Mr. Woods, but he's carrying his son legacy on yep. and going to make it make a difference. And that's truly what counts. Absolutely. What a way yes. to, to make sure the, his, the memory of his son lives on forever. That is fantastic. Roy Hart, yes. thanks for joining yep. us. Thanks, Lindsay, Roy. Chaz, we're already out of time. No. I believe this. We didn't get to Lindsay's lowdown. I'm disappointed, but uh, you know what? We have three we'll, hours tomorrow. That's right. we got three hours tomorrow, Woo-woo. so we'll talk about it. Again, I want to thank everybody here with the Icky Woods uh, Celebrity Golf Tournament, Cheryl Burnham Thornton. Thank you so much yes. for having us out. 
out here. And uh, thanks to Icky and all the players who came in. And Chaz and Lindsay, as always, a pleasure to be with, Our with you guys and working My with pleasure. you guys. And we will be with, back with you next week here on the Silver and Black today um, on CBS Sports Radio. Again, a couple of things I want to remind you of. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., the rotation, Great American Pub. Paul Ihander, Lindsey Brown, and myself will be kicking off the early Monday night football game from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, as well. And don't forget, we will be doing this show live from London uh, in October, just about a month away from now here on CBS Sports Radio. So don't do it. Check out silverandblacktoday.com as we get rolling into the Raiders season tomorrow night. You want to thank a couple people back. Colin Pucciarella, our engineer back in the studio. Mark Bonilla, our executive producer on site here at Valley High. We'll talk to you guys next week. Until then, may the autumn wind always be at your back. Take care, everybody. Yeah.